Hey guys, so I had some emails the other day and a couple of them had a common theme of basically pain and suffering when it comes to picking the guitar. Tension, and, you know, pain in joints, shoulder pain, and things like this. So I thought, well, um, beyond the descriptive material in the little book, maybe I could address this in a video. So uh, I think the, the best place to start is actually the pick that you're using. And um, there was a fad uh, a while back. I don't know if people are still doing it, but it was the enormous guitar pick. And uh, I've got an example of it right here. Uh, this thing, I God only knows how big this thing is. It looks like something that fell off the International Space Station. It's just enormous. It's, I don't know, it's probably at its thickest. Um, it could be 10, 15 millimeters. I don't know. It's just unbelievably, and it's heavy. Um, it's not actually a very good guitar pick. Uh, the, the point or the tip where it makes contact with the string is not exactly a, the most rational design. I don't know. But um, I, I wrote an article about these things once. There's a, a link I'll put down there to it if, you, if you're interested. Uh, but I guess the, the idea, though, is uh, one of the side benefits of these enormous things is that the distance uh, increases the, the separation between index and thumb and you end up for some reason uh, you can do your own research on this the claim is that it, it reduces uh, basically pain and suffering when you pick uh, whether that's the case i don't know because i never even got around to using that this uh, this pick that much um, but it's an interesting idea um, i most picks that i've used um, over the years have been basically large picks not in overall size but in thickness uh, so, for example, there was uh, V picks came out with an infinity pick. <laughs> I had to check that out, right? Uh, I don't know. It's got to be five, six, seven millimeters. I don't even know. You'll have to look online at the specs. Interesting material. What is it, acrylic or something like that? I kind of like it. Some people complain about the um, kind of chirpiness of it. Um, the point of the tip wears out pretty quick so I didn't use this very much it's good for occasional uses you know for special effects or something when you know what kind of a scrapey uh, scratchy tone or something like that uh, so you might try that um, there um, Dugane makes really nice picks um, and uh, they, they're sort of like shaped in a way to automatically put your finger your index finger in the right kind of uh, configuration or sort of slotted into it they make a small version i think it's called the mini mini duke or something like that and then they have the the normal size get the normal size and you can experiment with different materials my personal favorite is the coconut dugain pick uh, uh, the pick it's just the, the material is fantastic sounds great feels great it's got good attack and uh, a good release off the string very few artifacts in the sound so you might try a Dugain coconut pick or you try the other materials I have all kinds of them uh, I have this is a uh, it's like a giant jazz 3 in coconut I can't remember what the company was uh, but they're out there you can go like strings me on or whatever I think it's probably where I got this great material great nice pick especially on like acoustic guitar I love these things um, Vegan it's a it's, Looks like it's spelled like Wigan for us Anglos, but I think it's Vegan Picks. It has one called the Big City. A nice material, um, good grip. Uh, it sounds fantastic. I love the way that it, the, the attack and the release on the string. No bad artifacts. Uh, you might try that. This is a really nice pick for all around use. Uh, but for like speedy playing, I've always been using the, uh, or at least for the last few years, I went back to these. Um, Dunlop Jazz 3 Ultex, the black ones, and uh, their claim to fame is that it has a, what do you call it, a hybrid conical tip, something like that. So if you get in really close to it, you can see that uh, you know, it has a, uh, in guitar terminology, we might call it a compound radius at the, at the, at the business end, but uh, it's actually a conical radius, kind of like a Parker Nightfly fretboard or something like that. And uh, this is a great pick. But again, the common theme for all these picks is that they're thicker than your average uh, guitar pick. So try a thicker pick. And, uh, and of course, gripping it is absolutely key. 
to eliminating pain. So um, uh, maybe 10 days ago, two weeks ago, somebody emailed me and actually provided a photograph of how they held the pick and wanted to know if it was a, a problem. And uh, it was basically a photo that showed index finger going straight down toward the tip or the, the point of the pick. And essentially, there's nothing you can do to, dis to, do <laughs> to destroy everything you're trying to do on guitar than by holding a pick like that. It will absolutely wreak havoc on every aspect of your playing. It's horrible. So you don't, that's not how you hold a guitar pick. One thing that'll happen is that you will end up with all kinds of flex like that. And look at this angle I'm getting with my thumb. When I do that, I actually feel pain in my thumb joint. Okay, when you get going like that. And that's gonna be a byproduct of holding the pick incorrectly like so. So when I do this, I feel pain in my thumb joint I can feel all the muscles in the palm of my hand tensing up, and in a few minutes, I'll probably start feeling some tendon strain, right? So this is, this is killing everything you're trying to do with guitar will be destroyed or undermined by holding the pick incorrectly. So the way you hold the guitar pick is the way they've been teaching it in the silly Mel Bay books for decades, right? So it's uh, like the little the trick I have in the book is hold your you know, your index finger up like this, and then balance the pick, find the balance point, like that. So your index finger is actually pointing right back at you. The pick is balanced, and just bring the thumb down. And there you go. You've got the right grip, right? And you don't want this, right? You just want to hold your, your thumb out naturally, right? And you want a nice level I don't want this, I want this nice linear form. Then take your arm and go directly down to the guitar. And I personally, I anchor uh, on virtually any guitar I play, I anchor with my pinky finger. I may or may not rest a little, have a little contact with the side of the hand on the bridge. If it's a, a guitar with a Floyd, I, I try not to touch the bridge at all. If it's any of my other guitars, I'm anchoring with the pinky. I might have a little contact uh, with the bridge. I might have a lot of contact with the bridge depending on what it is. If it's not floating, if it's decked, you know, if it's a, a vibrato bridge but it's decked, a lot of times I'll get a lot of my, even rest the, the hand on it depending on what I'm doing. But when you really start flying, I sort of bring it up a little bit, keep the anchor with the pinky, and, and show it like hell. Uh, I also use, of course, ring and middle finger for hybrid picking. Um, so if you're using the right pick, with the correct grip, then you're you're well on your way to eliminating pain and suffering in your you know when you're playing the guitar. So, but there's another side to it, of course, and that's the psychology of it. And this is wildly more complicated. Um, essentially, I think a lot of people who are experiencing pain, even if you're using the right grip or something like this, it comes down to a, a basically a sort of like a warfare between uh, what you're trying to do or what you want to do on the guitar and what you imagine other people thinking that you should do on the guitar. So if we use a, a bad metaphor of software and hardware, uh, you can end up with a conflict between the two. Uh, you should be in a situation where you've got the right software uh, basically telling the hardware you know, what to do. And uh, the problem comes down to essentially you being at war with yourself in a sense that you have, uh, you know, you think, well, I've got a brain and I've got a mind, but the mind is, you know, vastly more complicated. Uh, we're not single-minded in a sense. There's a whole, in psychology, they have a, a kind of multimodality thesis or multi, multi-mind thesis that some people have worked on. This is an old idea uh, going by various names, uh, but the, the gist of it is this that you've got one body and brain sort of thing, and, but you've got multiple minds. Uh, you've got you know, your personal side or your private side and the sort of desires and, and um, goals that you have individually. And then of course you have a kind of public conscience, you have a, you know, your public mindedness, and this is an orientation toward what other people uh, 
or you imagine other people um, demanding you to do. So you have external constraints and these come into conflict uh, with one another. What you want to do and what you imagine others demanding that you do. So <clears throat> that conflict will manifest itself in pain and suffering uh, as you're hacking away at the guitar. So uh, the solution to this, of course, is, well, you could simply become a conformist tool uh, and strum away playing happy songs and the pain and suffering goes away. Um, the alternative to this is that you can simply wall yourself off from external constraints and just make yourself happy and just ride off into the sunset being a complete freak uh, doing whatever you want and the pain and suffering will go away as well. Uh, you know, you don't have an audience, you're not recording yourself, you're just making yourself happy, you're probably going to physically feel great <laughs> playing the guitar uh, with that mentality. Uh, the tough thing is, of course, is when um, you are trying to make yourself happy while simultaneously pleasing the public. And if that's your mentality, uh, then you might end up with a con that conflict manifesting itself as pain in your shoulder, arm, elbow, wrist, you know, thumb. Um, so once you're aware of that contradiction, at least then you can focus on it um, and, and kind of take a, almost like a therapeutic approach. All right, here's what I want to do. And I realize there's these external constraints, but keep in mind that externality is really just in your head, right? Um, <laughs> so once you can reconcile yourself to that, um, you know, I'm going to make myself happy and I'm going to put it out there in public and hopefully people go for it. And if they don't, well, that's okay too, right? Um, very few people get to be themselves and get paid for it in the world of music. Unfortunately, it's never worked out for me. Um, it probably never will. And, but that's okay. Uh, I'm lucky enough to have a career that uh, enables me actually to get paid to be myself. So I'm very grateful for that. And, uh, you know, maybe sometime down the road, uh, m me playing guitar will make other people happy. And that's great. And if not, well, that's okay, too. Uh, but I'll, I'll still try to make myself happy. Um, so uh, if, you, if you take that into consideration uh, and think about it, that might have some bearing on how you play guitar. You know, even down to how you're holding the pick. So get the right pick, use the right grip, relax, try to make yourself happy at first, right? And then once you're able to satisfy your, you know, your own goals um, and go gradually, make sure that it feels good the whole way, then later on you can worry about, well, is this, am I doing anything that might please the big other? <laughs> And, and then maybe you'll be in a position uh, to, you know, better manage or deal with those conflicting interests. So, well, good luck. See you later.